Hey everybody, it's Cody, Dixon RC. So, Red Cat come out with a flat skid for the Gen 8. No more hump, it's completely flat. It doesn't even have the bevel like the Bauhaus mount has. Um, I'll shoot some close up so you can see what it looks like right here while I'm talking to you. They kind of really released this and didn't really tell anybody or didn't really say anything about it. Uh, I think they mentioned it a couple of months ago that they were talking about doing this, but they uh, released it and didn't really tell anybody. So this kit is $13, hard plastic, you know, the normal nylon plastic that it has. It comes with the skid and it comes with another battery tray. I do not think this battery tray is any different than the stock one. Uh, we shall see though, because it looks very similar. It may be a little bit smaller as in the height, but that means the other one will still work. The link geometry on this one is the same as the, as the stock. How they figured out how they set it up that way works out. It's great. It's a good little kit. It's only $13, man. It's, it's really, 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 really hard to beat. I had a local guy. He just bought this Gen 8 for me, and he put massive 2.2s on it. So I like different stuff like that. It's kind of cool. He used it to install this, so I'm going to show you guys how to do it. Uh, it should be fairly straightforward. Everything pretty much bolts to the top. The links will probably be the hardest part of the whole thing. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to probably shoot it from the top so you guys can see uh, how that works and everything like that. So just stay tuned and we'll get this installed. All right, so here we go. So of course you know you got to take the body off. That's normal. That's kind of the thing. Out the way. Get out the way here. So I've already removed the battery out of this thing to get it out of the way. Uh, so probably ought to take the battery straps out. You're going to reuse those. You're going to disconnect the one plug here that goes to the ESC that goes through this. You're going to want to remove that. Looks like there is, well, let's see if I get all these wires out of the way. I don't know what he's done with all these wires. Wires everywhere. Uh, so looks like you got two two millimeters here, one here, one here, and one here. And then one looks like through the fender well. Yeah, so I am going to use our Hobby Details driver, of course, because why would I not? should work out well. Oh, yeah. Probably have to keep all these screws because they will need to be reused. That'd be a, that'd be a safe bet that they would need to be used again. I'm glad to see this one they went to a nice fine thread screw instead of those crazy coarse threads they used to have in the Gen 7. Alright, so I'm going to take these bolts out here. I'm going to move them over here out of the way. So this side bolt here that's on this part of the battery tray here is right here. Uh, let's see if I can get that in there so you guys can see it. Uh, right there. Yeah, so it is part of the fender well, like the inner fender type deal. There it goes. So that will stay in there because of the plastic of the fender wells. And that takes the battery tray off. So let's look at this other battery tray and see if it's any different. Um, that does not look any different. It has the same height, same everything. So basically you just get a free battery tray. <laughs> I guess that's the whole deal. So nothing to it, pretty easy as far as that goes. So, all right, next. Now this will probably be the hardest part of everything, taking the drive shafts out because you want to make sure that you don't strip them out for one thing. Uh, I'm gonna use my MIP one and a half because it has the tight, the greatest bite to this that I can get as far as that goes. So the rear one is out. Keep up with that as well. Should be able to just slide it and move it down. One of these is going to give us a fit, I'm sure. It's going to be hard to get out. <laughs> it's going to try and strip. I'm keeping these drive shaft screws separate from those so I don't lose them. Um, Take that out there. So now we need to move. There we go. 
There's that there. All right, they all came out fairly easy, so good. That's very rare, because that doesn't happen. So I think I'm gonna have to take both sides out of this one, or you know what, better yet, when you go to loosen the tr transfer case out of here, it should move out with it, so you should be good to go on that one. So of course we're gonna use this again. You know what, let's use handheld just for this. So this screw, that screw out there was loose already from the factory it looks like. I'm gonna try and rush this so this isn't a super, super long video, which is probably still gonna be 20 minutes or so, because just how it is. All right, well, there you go. So probably, so this is just a plastic transfer case, nothing special. Just keep up with that so you can have that put back on. All right, so let's go ahead while we're up here, we'll go ahead and loosen all these. Ooh, it's actually got a screw, nice. Got an old trusty Craftsman wrench here. Seven thirty seconds works for these five and a half millimeter screw bolts, nuts, excuse me. So let that fall there. That flew out of there as well. Keep up with those. This one does not have a nut on it, so you should be able to just loosen it. Try and keep if you want it to go back the way you had it, be sure and try and keep up with where you had your links at from the get-go um, and it's probably not super massively important but it's probably not a bad idea just so you'll know all right that's loose there i think i hope the lower ones are all uppers try and move them to where they will be out of the way it can be hard to do that's kind of not going to stay out of the way probably <laughs> all right so now to get to the underside here let me find that nut to keep with that it's looking like so I'm gonna try and flip this over without whacking everything out here Drive shaft fell out, figured it would. They normally do. It looks like there is actually two. There's a bolt there and a bolt there. That's they like they're long enough to run through there. I'm not going to use handheld, I'm going to use the gun. Probably only take it out just enough to probably don't have to take the whole thing out. Probably just just enough to remove the I say that that may yeah okay it's long enough all right so it is a bolt that has threads at the very end there and nothing at there so that's it you just remove those all the way out as far as you can or all the way out actually and then you should be able to just slide that one is not being easy to come out hmm. All right, so those are, that's removed there. So now, the way the skid looks, you can see how the, the stock one looks. Uh, it's gonna have these bolts here that hold the side skirts on. Of course, that means the side, little side skirts are gonna pop off, which is 
always fun, but you know, that's just how it is. Nothing you can really do about that. So let's take these center bolts out. Keep those there. Now take the, the four that are on the outer part that hold the skirt on. I'm sure that I'm sure the skirt's going to fall off. Now that we're taking this loose, well, maybe not. Maybe it's made to the fenders. Maybe it won't. It won't do nothing there as far as that goes. All right, so now that you know those are loose, you can tell how they've come apart there. I'm about to give it a little bit of juice, and there we go. It'll pop right out. A little bit of strength pops right out. Make sure you line it up the same as you had it. You know, put it back in the same way you took it out, kind of deal. So let's see. Get that to pry all that apart. All right, now put it back together the way you know, the same direction. You know, reverse order the way you took it apart. So I would suggest putting these in first, if you can get it to line up, there we go. So do the two center ones. Of course you could do this by hand, make it a little easier, make sure you torque it right. I'm trying to, I'm watching it while I do it, to make sure I don't ruin that. I will actually probably go back over it by hand to make sure they're tight. All right, so let's put the lowers, the lower arms back in. The biggest things to remember. So probably he's got all these on the outs the outer most points so we will try and do that just to match it just to make sure we're correct on that that's all Let's try and do this without getting my head in the way here there we go well maybe not come on oh I do hate these So keep the long, these remember these are the ones with the long, no thread and then it has thread at the very end of it. Swing and a miss. There we go. All right, so that one's in. That one's at a weird angle, so I would not suggest using all your power there to do that. Same goes for this one. Try 
and grab it as much as you can because it's going to be a pain because of all the front stuff holding it on. Grab one of your bolts. There it goes. I'll speed up through the other side. All right, so we're gonna put the uppers on now. Uh, same way as the front, you know, the old ones were. Looks like it was in the middle, middle. So we'll do that. I believe it will fit good enough. Oh, it's tight. Oh boy. I don't know why they want you to do that. I'm not a big fan of their rod ends. <laughs> How massively huge they are, kind of deal. So that doesn't look that great. I know y'all can see that how bent that is. It is not too keen. That's it though. There's no way that can be correct. Oh, okay, so look, the stock one does not have this, this piece right here. See, it is, there's nothing there. Maybe that's the difference. Eh, it'll work. It'll be okay. I'm sure anyway. I wonder why they did that. And didn't say anything about it. That's the other thing about it. You didn't get no, there's no info on it whatsoever. So when you have a problem getting the bolt in like that, you always get your trusted little little bitty pliers try and get it lined up to where it will just fold over and just hope it grabs and it did so I don't think that's really going to affect anything I don't like the way that is I wonder why they did that I, I do I do wonder that and of course I screwed up doing that as well because of that so man that is that is weird I wonder why they did that it really makes no sense for it to be like that to be honest with you because it will fit just like the other one it could have not have that and it would be fine it would not really make a difference as far as how it fits in there and it's kind of crazy you kind of got to You kind of got to shove it in there. Yeah, I don't think I don't really think that though that piece over there is needed. Uh, it doesn't look like it anyway. All right, so I'm going to get our drive shafts. I'm to try and get it in phase as, well, as good as possible. Yeah, there we go. So that's there. The front one, it just fell. <laughs> Imagine that. So that one's in. Now we put the transfer case back together. Uh, I am going to. So I loosen that. I'm going to put that back in because if I don't, it's going to move so much. Also, remember I have full boom racing drive shaft kits. I wanted to replace this and the other two as well. Just go ahead and get rid of 
the janky plastic ones that are in here. All right, so that's there. Boom. Look at that perfect fit. That is nice. So let's put this back on. You know what? Let's do it by hand. That's what I did, taking it off. Um, so it looks like there is no height to that. It looks like it's perfect the way it should be. Um, which is good. That's that's a good thing. So it looks like the third, the upper arm for the three link. is going to be the same way as the rears. Um, I don't foresee it being any other. Well, this one, I think the, you know, that one wasn't like this either. I don't know, man. It's kind of strange they did that. I don't really understand the reasoning behind it. So let's just see if we can get this in there without having to take the ESC out. <laughs> there we go. I'm gonna move the other side of that. I don't think that's gonna work. This is gonna have to be moved. Pretty easy to move, wasn't it? Could have done that from the get-go. But that also fit better as well. So who knows, man? Who knows why they do the way they do this stuff when they build these, when they rebuild these things? Alright, so now drive shaft time. I made sure when I put them together, they were in sync, phase, whatever you want to call it. There we go. There we go. All right. So just for the sake of it, I'm going to put his new uh, tray on him on just because why not? It's new. Why would you not put it on? That kind of deal. Well, there you have it. So, put the Red Cat flat bottom center skid with the battery tray on. You now have no hump, which at one time you had this hump. Uh, I mean, that's a pretty big difference. You know, that's what it looked like. Now it's pretty, it's, it's flat. I mean, that's really nice. And it's nice that a manufacturer listened and knew what people wanted. They knew everybody wanted to get rid of this. People were shaving it. Uh, of course, Bauhaus come out with one the whole nine yards so they knew this was a needed thing uh, to have a flat skid so they come out with one props to Red, Red Cat for listening 
into doing it. I mean, you know, a lot of people, a lot of these manufacturers can talk it, but they don't ever really go through with it. So they did a good job with that. So pretty cool. Nice, nice little update. Not bad for $13 as well. It's pretty cheap. I have two more in stock right now. By the time this video comes on, they'll be listed on the website, so you'll be able to go buy it. Uh, I also have uh, the new heavy-duty axle shafts for the portals and also the upgraded housings for the axles. Uh, they will not be on sale until November 1st. Uh, Red Cat right now has them on some special where if you own a Red Cat, you're on the Gen 8, you can get one fairly, you can get it pretty cheap. So it's a good idea just to buy it that way. But I want you to buy it for me as well. So so there you go. That's it for that. Um, and uh, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thanks.